Okay, now we continue with the same examples of the general life. Look at this particular slide. See, the first point is each space is mathematically proportional. As I said, that individual spaces are highly geometric, so they are mathematically proportional. They are not irregular. Okay, human in scale and varying in size. So basically, if we now look at architecture and landscape combination, in this we will find that the buildings are, or the rooms are, or spaces are highly proportional, and they are varying in sizes. They never bothered about you know just trying to replicate the same thing in the same size or scale. So that varied. But there is an absence of repetition and balance overall. So all spaces are placed, but each one is very geometric. There was ex exclusive zones for kings, harem, and public. This division of kings, harem means ladies or the queens and her zone and the public zone. This has also been reflected or we have seen this in Mughal landscape styles. So it is you can always correlate this with the social customs or the traditions or the religious beliefs by which they are guided. So here the king's portion which are exclusive for the king and his other court you know conditions and also the guests and there is a separate space for the queens and the separate space for the public. The whole thing is located on a very high edge, altogether non unified geometric form as I said, asymmetric overall layout. This what you are saying, seeing is also repeated in the other examples of uh, Spanish landscape, historically renowned Sp Spanish landscape, I will explain that in Alhambra. So there is an absence of strong dominant axis. If you see this, do not consider this as a dominant axis. If you look at the entire profile of this particular area, then you will find that this is the this is one axis, then you go here, then this is another axis. If you go to this part, there is another axis. If you go to this particular part, there is another axis. So there is no dominant axis. Contrary to the other landscape styles, we will discuss, we will compare. See, as we will go from one style to another style, we will always keep back and forth comparison between the landscape styles that you have discussed. So, since it is the first one that you are discussing, I will not give any comparison with other landscape styles, but these will be referred back again and compared again when this is going to be discussed in other landscape styles. Extrovert na nature of design. So, this is what it is all these areas that you have to see in this particular landscape, if you see the section over here, you will find that this is the particular structure, this is the zone which is here, this is the flat portion which you are seeing here and there is a, there is a sloping area in this. But do not underestimate this just by simple section that you are seeing. If you really see the pictures, you will find the gardens has become an extension of architectural spaces. There is an extensive use of flower, flowing water and fountains. If you look at this particular picture, you will find the plantation is not very plenty. It is not very dominating, but it is almost covering. It is you know I would say that this is just optimal required as required. In this they have this water channel which is running from here to here and the space where the rulers and his other friends would be sitting, they are at a high elevation. This has been again repeated in some other landscape styles, we will come later. So basically what happens is, there is a central channel through which the water is flowing and this water is being kept in dynamic mode by fountains and spouts. The water is flowing below this particular structure and then the vegetation, the low height vegetations, not very extravagant. The bit of vegetation that you, are do, you do see here, this is flowing, overflowing from the upper regions which they have planned for. Okay. So, this is the kind of landscape that they do have. This is what is romantic. If you recall, we I had been saying classic, romantic and all these I had been discussing earlier. You know, basically it is a romantic kind of landscape style that they have created. There is no uh, you know hardcore domination by the rulers in this of course it everything has been designed by their choices and the, by their approval but the whole ambience is very very romantic 
look at this when you are seeing the downhill they have the archways. So, the archways blends with the landscape here the architecture blends with the landscape quite often in current scenarios or in contemporary landscaping we are seeing that people are using arches, arcades, columns, colonnades such things with the water and other landscape styles as a blend. You know this I feel has been we can always say that it has been borrowed from this kind of landscape styles no harm as long as it is the best practice that could result. Okay. This is the picture of the same one that we have seen earlier, but this picture has been taken from this particular entry point. So, when you enter you have this structure and then when you are looking at the other parts of it, it is the archway on this side. So, the picture has been the earlier picture was taken from the left side, the arch is on this side and the other picture is taken from the other side. So, altogether, if you look at it, it is very low key landscape styles. Another picture at different point of time gives us a very good overview of this. They have other zones. You would refer to the plan that hand sketch plan that I have given. If you refer to that, you have there is a pressure de low cypresses. This is the area again in which it is highly introvert. This does not have any clue of the other areas, other regions, because this has been placed in different portions. And this particular area now is also landscaped well, but again low key, low height vegetations which we generally call hedges or small shrubs, low height shrubs and then fountains. So, this is a secluded one essentially for the ladies. So, they required even uh, protections. This is small small spouts in the fountains which are surrounding surrounded by hedges. So, different views of the same thing from different directions. Another thing that they have added here that is is called the water steps. Interestingly this water step is you know take note of this. If you recall I will just go back to that particular sketch plan to give you a reference for linking you I will come back. Okay, in this, this f is the water step it starts from here goes down like this. So, this is the up the hill and this is downhill. Okay. what they have created is this steps where we have the balusters or the edges in which the water is flowing. And this water when it falls from one elevation to the next elevation to the next elevation then it creates a sound and that sound is a small you know a ripple sound which makes it very interesting. So, it is no longer a kind of thing kind of landscape which you view it is also you know inciting your auditory senses. So, when you look at this kind of landscapes you find a ripple sound. So, this becomes from the higher elevation when you keep on going down like this the water flows on the sides. So, if you now walk along this and when the water is flowing that also cools the entire temple area. So, this is what is a water step these water steps also has become a very important feature in many of the modern day landscapes. This is a step again if you look at that the steps which is coming in this form and the water is flowing through this. The water is also sometime allowed to flow through this particular steps the steps is wet. So, what happens is if you walk on that you get a slightly wet steps it is also very interesting kind of landscape feature which can be emulated even today. So, these are different views of this water steps and all these you know different kind of surfaces allows the water to flow and get broken into small 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 uh, particles and makes sound interesting sound. Next example that I am going to cite here is of Alhambra. So, it is a fortress palace built over a long period of time 
so over 250 years this has been built. So, basically it is very interesting to watch. See there is nothing, no symmetrical in the expression in the whole architecture if you look at the picture. This picture does not give us any idea that this is very, very symmetrical. If you look at the plan you will believe in it also. And since it has been built over long period of time, you know two centuries, then what happened is it kept went on, you know uh, appending different structures to the old one, to the old one. Some got dilapidated, they got demolished. So, it, it was a I would say a dynamic process by which this has been developed, but this I am saying architecturally, but let us look at it also landscape wise. But however, mere position of this at the higher altitude gives us an advantage in terms of landscape, not indoor, but outdoor. If you see on the structures, you know all the windows are on the edges, they are you know they have deliberately put windows on the edges, so that you know the inhabitants can see the surrounding landscapes. There are arguments people say that it is also for security safety reasons, no problem I do not contest it, but the thing is if you have a window overlooking the rolling mountain, then of course, security and safety is there you, will, you can take care of it you can watch as a surveillance, but the thing is enjoying the nature is also very, very important. So, you get that benefit here, different other views of the same places. Look at this plan, it gives us a very clear idea that this is developed over ages and at different parts they have got appended. This is one of the architectural characteristics of Spanish architecture. That means, each space is highly formal geometric, but placed as it required. So, it was organic in nature of placements and layouts, but very much geometric in placement of inside spaces or indoors. This particular project has almost run out of his life. So, some portion which uh, which are still the historians have identified this could be learned from this particular picture. In fact, this is the one which is now visible to all the tourists and which is only this part, but let us look at it in this. If you see this here each spaces they have a geometric profile and this geometric profiles are interconnected with another spaces other spaces. But how is the landscape character of this? In this, let us look at it. This portion is Hall of the Kings. Why we are focusing on the architecture? Because in Spanish architecture, architecture and the landscape they almost blended, it became integral, and both are equally important. In fact, I would say in this, in Spanish landscapes, the building dominated over the landscape. Landscape was only complementing, but in other landscape styles, landscape quite often dominated. So, if we in current scenario, in contemporary situation, if suppose whenever we are trying to integrate landscape with the architecture, then Spanish landscape is, is the place where we can learn from. The halls of kings, this is a pavilion, this is a coat of lion, famous coat of lion, in which they have a series of stone lions, small, small min miniature stone lions, they have put it here and they have the gargoyles or the spouts. Each lion's face is spouting water and the water is flowing from here to here. So, it is not an extravagant water zone, it is only the water is flowing from this particular zone to this particular zone and through spouts. So, what happens is what is the remaining area is dry, there is no landscaping done in this. Landscaping is this is the portion which we consider as the landscape zone. This is the hall of two sisters, this is the bath. And this is the coat of the metals, metals. This is a tower of commerce. Now let's look at this. These are all architectural, very much pure architectural. In this Alhambra, the best two examples that you find is one here and one here. So there are examples which are in this. Halls of two sisters. The earlier picture was of the halls of the kings. These are halls of the two sisters. And this is the baths on the floor. This is a tower of commerce. This particular area is called Cuatro Dorado. Sometimes this 
you know pronunciation is very, very difficult for these terms, we are not used to it. Okay. Then this is a zone which is called a Nekshur, they have a mosque here and then this is the hall of Avin Sarajas, this is the court of lions. Let us see, I might have a bigger picture of this, but however looking at this itself, look the entire portion is paved, this entire zone is paved and then we have a court of lions, a series of lion, face, lion statues here, each one of the mouth of these lions has gargoyles through which water will be spouted and these are small small channels on all four directions through which water is coming here and ultimately being spouted from here and also they have the spouts at this particular point. This is the court of the Matthews. Look at this, the entire area is very much enclosed and at the central base they have a large water body and on the edge they have a very low height hedges. Interestingly, this is not an extravagant landscaping. So, what this Spanish landscape teaches us is you do not have to overdo, do not overdo in the landscaping. You do the landscaping as much as it is just required. So, just required means this is what brings us to a kind of philosophy that where some people think that the landscape should be adopting the minimalist approach. The moment you overdo, you forcefully put in landscape, then it becomes a landscape actions, but here it is an integral actions. People fail to realize when you have stepped from one architectural space to a landscape space or vice versa. This is something to be learned. Okay, this is the court, court of Quattro Dorado. This is the view of that court of lions in which these are the spouts and we also have the fountains over here and these are the channels through which the water is flowing. See the channels are not very deep, it is one interesting thing is their objective was not to have a deep channel, objective was if they could have a surface water because what happens is when there is a evaporation action takes place at that particular point interestingly only the surface of the water matters the depth does not. So, there is no use giving that depth and ultimately having more amount of water because even if they had plenty, plenty of water this depth does not add anything to our temperature conversions. So, it is just the depth that is required over which the superficial water will be now evaporated and it will cool the entire surfaces. If you look at this particular picture in detail in slightly closely you will find it is hardly there is any depth and if I try to see measure from this it may not be more than 50 mm or maybe slightly more 80 mm that is a kind of depth. So, you have a sheet of water which is rolling, so you do not require more amount of water, but what is important is you have to have more surface area, more surface area in that means you have more surface area of water for evaporations and the depth is little. So, this is the quantum of water that just suffices for the entire evaporative cooling. This is interesting to note and mind it they have done it long long years back. So, the running water channels again enters through the court from there it comes inside. So, this has been followed even in the Mughal garden styles. So, what happens is this particular space which is under shed also has a cooling effects. First of all the cooling is done by shading and the second of all cooling is done by evaporative cooling. Um, here the water that flows it does not go in high velocity, it just flows very gently over it because if it goes by high velocity evaporation may not be feasible that way. So, if it just remains but does not remain static it just flows automatically there will be a evaporative cooling that will take place. This is the fundamental that they have used very interesting. So, that is what I have said here similar compositional is also found in the red fort of Delhi and Agra fort. I will discuss that later. This is Pesio de lo Arianes court of metals they call if you look at this it is a water body see aesthetically if you look at it people get amazed to see that there is a nice reflection of the structure, but the point is we are discussing about landscape especially of course aesthetics also are part of the landscape. 
So, if you look at it, you do not see much of reflections of other greens and you do not have mu much greens either. So, what you have here is the water body and a very low height hedge that is enough and that creates a grandeur in this particular landscape styles. If you recall I was talking about the windows to overlook towards outside, this is what it is. They have different such kind of punctures on the exterior wall. So, whenever they look around they will see the hills, they will see the sky, blue sky, they will see the greens and other structures, but they are at the lower altitude. So, they always overlook towards this, this is interesting. The garden of Daraksa in which they have a very ordered landscape design and here you can see they have also used the vertical landscaping through creepers you know which are you know which are supported by the trees. So, this is again very inwardly introvert landscapes that they have created. I will summarize these. So, these are all separations they have the pathways pavements and then the small small hedges. Before going to the Google, let us summarize what we have learned from the Spanish landscape architecture. First of all, they have always integrated or blended landscape with the architecture. Architecture never dominated over the landscapes, rather landscape became complementary to or complementary to the architecture. So, in this what we learn is architecture and landscape are together. Second thing what you have learned from here is they have not overdone landscaping. They have utilized anything that is available. They have utilized the snow clad mountains molten water, molten snow water for fountains and all. So, they have always used they have always placed the water channels and other things at the lower altitude. So, that the water can flow from up to downhill using the flow of gravity. So, that eliminated a good amount of manpower. Nobody had to lift the water to that level and then ultimately release it for fountains to work. It worked naturally. So, the basic science they have used. Third thing that they have used is architecturally their spaces are different though very geometric they are different and they are not necessarily in the same axis. So, the landscape also did not remain in the same axis. So, if I now say architecture is non axial but geometric here the landscape is also non axial but geometric. Why it is geometric because it is guided by the inner walls of that particular space within which it is contained. But however, the moment you walk into this see through the picture then you feel that you it is very much to the human scale and highly responsive and highly romantic. So, it was not the strong grandeur that you are forcefully being said look at the landscape and enjoy. No, you as soon as you step into it you start enjoying. At the same time they have used the scientific phenomena of evaporative cooling. This evaporative cooling through coat of lions, through flowing channels, through less shallow channels, wider shallow channels and the fountains they have reduced the air temperature in the surrounding zones up to the human height. There is no reason that you have to cool all the parts or entire volume and there they have done it very very intelligently. These are things to be learned. If you look at the Cordoba as an example in which the first idea or the intention of cooling an area for the benefit of the people is to be learned. So, this is what we have learned from the Spanish landscape design and I can assure you if you look at the contemporary designs you will find it appears to be almost almost Spanish, but with a, a bit of mix of other styles. Now, let us discuss about the Mughal landscape style. See why Mughal I am placing immediately after Spanish because the concepts are similar. They have used the similar similar ideas, similar concepts, similar elements. So, element wise in the Spanish what do we found? It is water body, fountain, vegetation, steps, pebbles, such elements. In Mughal also we find the similar things, but we are coming sequentially here. The baseline information location is India and the period is 1500 AD, latitude is 28 degree in Agra Delhi and 35 degree at Kashmir. Interestingly in India we have two regions one called uh, Delhi region and this is called Kashmir region. Delhi is typically hot arid zones and the Kashmir is cooler zones. 
Kashmir is in the hilly area and Delhi is in the flat area. Interestingly, the whole Mughal garden concepts got developed in these two parts, which earned popularity in the history. So, longitude and latitude wise, longitude is 75 degree east. The climate is tropical climate, intense heat from March to June, monsoon from June to September. So, that is the kind of climate and of course, in the Kashmir region it is cooler all through. The terrain is flat in Agra and dry hot air and less vegetated at Agra or Delhi. Delhi is similar to that Agra. Thick vegetation and springs and snow melted water source in Kashmir, but which is not true in Agra Delhi. So, if you look at this, how does it differ? As I said that I will be always comparing with the last one that we have discussed. How does it differ or match with the Spanish landscape? Here, some areas which are very flat, very hot arid, they have used the landscape. Some areas which is undulating in hills, very cold, they have used the landscape. But interesting thing is, in Spanish landscape, they have used it as it required, but in Mughal, they have used a different style. I am coming to that. If you look at the socio political history of this Mughal landscape styles, so you know, basically, these Mughals were you know, descendants of Tamilang or and they, have, they are of Islamic faith. But Islamic faith did not really dominate the landscape styles, that might have dominated some bit of architecture, but not the landscape styles. Landscape style was a very peculiar thing that they have developed and which is unique, I would say. Expression of the landscape is organized, symmetrical. If you look at Mughal garden, it has to be symmetrical. Compare with Spanish, no, they are asymmetrical. Each individual component may be symmetrical or you know balanced and regular, but as soon as you look at all those parts you know as a whole, it is not symmetrical. There it strongly differs, this Mughal garden strongly differs from Islam, uh, uh, Spanish landscape. Architecture wise Mughal garden styles in which symmetric individual spaces with strong axial layout. Of course, we do see in Agra fort or in red fort in Delhi that they are placed one after another. We sometimes we fail to see the real axis, but if you really follow one space, you will find that it is linking one space to the next to the next to the next. But however, it is symmetrical individual spaces in general with a strong axial layout, strong axial layout. Landscape character literacy highly formal, it stands out independently. It is like what, what do I mean by this standing out independently is, if in the landscape you have some structures, take the structure out, landscape still remains as it is. So, landscape is unique, just placed with the architectural features. Charbagh is the concept that was brought here by Babur, the first ruler of Mughals, whom we identify as the first Mughal. Char Bagh means in Hindi, Char in English it is 4, Char means 4 and Bagh in Hindi, in English it is garden. So, it is 4 garden and 4 garden means 4 squares. So, Char Bagh is a concept which was brought by Babur and first introduced in the example of Ram Bagh in Agra. Of course, the garden is in a bad state now, but however, that is the first start of the Char Bagh and later on it had been followed. Everybody followed that till the Mughal gardens or were developed by anybody. Historically, I will come to that historically a little later. Okay, what are the elements and materials? Water channels, fountains, Baradari, Chabutara, sloping water caskets called Chadar. Let me just highlight Baradari and Chabutara. Water channels you have seen just like our Spanish gardens, fountains you have seen just like Spanish gardens. Baradari is a place you have seen in the Spanish garden as well. In general life, if you recall that once you see the first courts at the elevated level, the rulers position that is what is the Baradari. What they have done is all these rulers, they always used to sit over the flowing water. So, whenever they were at the elevated position, the water is to flow below them and that is to cool the entire temperature. So, they used to have always have a very nice experience, the water is to flow below that particular space, that is what is Baradari. And Chabutara is a square podium, 
which they are placed even over the cross of water, but very close to the water. Baradari used to be very high, it may be one floor above or it may be slightly half above, but Chabutara is almost above the water and that is the place people used to have you know all kind of cultural activities or even the ruler used to sit with his Kurishans in such areas. Thank you.